What's up, y'all? Y'all know who it is. It's your boy JP, the install guy, here to make your install life just a little bit easier. And today, I want to cover some of the basics on how to actually shop for the right amplifier. So with the last video that I made, 30 different ways to wire up your subs, I got asked a question about a certain wiring configuration and which amp should he choose to actually power his subs up. And the question that I usually get is, man, I got two 12s, what's a good amp? I have two 10s, what's a good amp? I have one 15, what's a good amp? And that's literally just not enough information. So when I thought to myself, I said, what's the use of actually showing you guys how to wire up subs if you don't know how to get the proper wattage to those subs? So that's why we have this video here today. If these are the type of things that you're into, please consider subscribing because these are the things that we do here. Car audio tutorials, rated removals, uh, anything car audio install related. That's what this channel is about. And from time to time, I like to share my car audio knowledge with you guys. So whether you're basic or advanced, this channel's for you. Here I'm using the JP8 amplifier from Down For Sound. Uh, I will have all these links in the description for you guys. We actually have a long lot of amps. We got the JP8, the JP23 the 33, the 43, the 63, and the 83. We also have some four channels as well, but this one right here is one that I actually have right now and is going to be going to another build that I have coming up soon. So I'm gonna use this as an example. Now, when it comes to actually shopping for the right amplifier, you can do this a couple different ways. Some people like to shop for the amp first and then get subs that will handle the power. Some people like to get the subs first and then find the right amplifier to match that. That second choice is usually the choice that I go with because a lot of times you don't have a whole lot of space to work with with your vehicle so what you need to do is find the subs that actually fit your car first and then once you find what fits you need to find out what are the wiring options for those subs now we can start looking for the amplifier that can give us that right amount of power to cover the rms for those speakers and depending on the amplifier you got, the easiest way is to just kind of look at the back of the amplifier and hopefully they have some type of information on the back to let you know what type of power they will be outputting. So the JP8 is an 800 watt RMS amplifier and you can see that they have two different ratings both at 12.4 volts and 14 volts. So yes, we are in a 12 volt uh, industry and this amplifier actually puts out power at 12 volts. So we can see at two ohms, this amplifier will put out 500 watts at 12.4 if your voltage is really strong and it stays consistent at 14.4 then that will put out 650 watts at 1 ohm since this is a 1 ohm stable amp you're looking at 700 watts at 12 volts and 850 watts at 14.4 now this amplifier also does 490 watts at 4 ohms and for those who don't understand ohms we don't have to get too scientific we can actually keep this pretty simple the higher the resistance the less power the amplifier is going going to output the lower the resistance the more power the amplifier is going to output and we all know now that we can wire our subs up different ways to pull a different amount of power out of the amp so let's take a dual two voice call sub just for an example if we wire that sub in series that means the ending impedance at the amp is going to be four ohms and we know that this amplifier will output 490 watts at four ohms so as long as your sub is at least a uh, 500 watts rms then you should be good now now, if we wire that sub in parallel, that two ohm, that dual two sub is now a one ohm sub. And that one ohm, this will give you either 700 or 850 watts. You need to make sure that that sub's RMS is at least 700 to 850 watts. That way we don't damage any equipment. And it's funny that on the back of this box, it actually says that these are true RMS ratings, which means this is the continuous power that the amplifier would do. And it says there's no such thing as peak. And when I'm shopping for my amplifier that's going to match my subs perfectly, I never look at the max or the peak rating. I always look at the RMS because the RMS of the sub is the amount of power that the sub is going to be able to do continuously all day without having any issues. And the RMS from the amp is going to be the power that they can output without overheating and all that type of stuff as well. I personally feel like people put the uh, peak or the max uh, rating on the amplifier so they can kind of upsell you because sometimes you can look at a box and it'll say 1800 watts peak or 1800 watts max and you know it'll have this big old number and bright yellow and red letters with like a you know that superhero bam thing behind it and stuff like that and you see that you got an 18 or 1600 watt amp and it only costs 180 bucks but then when you look on the back of the amplifier and you look at the RMS that 18 or 1600 watt amp first 
first of all, may not even be one ohm stable. And at two ohms, it may do 500 watts RMS. And at four ohms, it may do 300 watts RMS. So you're thinking that that 1800 watt or that 1600 watt amp is going to be a good deal because it's only $200. But then when you hook it up to your sub, it's not giving you the amount of bass that you think 1800 watts should give you. That's because it's not doing 1800 watts. You always want to go with the RMS ratings on the amp and on the subs. Pretty much anything that's car audio related, you need to look at the RMS wattage. All right, so now we're done with one sub. Let's just say you have two subs and they're dual fours. So quickly, two dual fours can be wired down to a one ohm load. Of course, this amplifier is going to do anywhere from 700 to 850 watts at one ohm. So now that we have two subs, let's just add up the RMS of the subs. So now your sub should be anywhere from 350 to about 400 or 425 RMS each. So when you add those together, you have anywhere from 700 to 850 watts at a one ohm. One ohm ending impedance once the subs are wired together and you know that this amplifier is going to output 700 to 850 watts towards that application. Now you can do this for a single sub, two, three, four, however many subs that you have. You just want to make sure that whatever sub you get, you look at the RMS and what wiring options do you have. After you find that information, then you want to go ahead and make sure that that amp is stable at whatever ohm load that you're going to wire those subs up and make sure that the RMS from the amp is going to match that sub and you should be good. So the JP8 has four gauge ground and power terminal. So you want to make sure you get the proper four gauge amp kit. I usually always recommend people use OFC, which is oxygen free copper for your amp. No CCA around here so we can keep everything clean. Now this amplifier does not have any type of internal fusing or anything. So we do recommend that you use a inline fuse holder and the recommended single fuse for this amp is going to be 120 amps. And if you need any type of fuse holders where there's going to be a mini a &L, regular a &L fuse holders, or you need some fuses, we will have all those links in the description at jpsaudio.com. And last but not least, I want to actually go over how you can control your bass by getting a bass knob. Now, you don't have to worry about buying one separately because the JP amps actually come with a bass knob. You see the Down for Sound logo on the front, and this is actually pretty dope because it gives you a ton of options. Not only will it tell you the voltage of what the amp is seeing, so yes, it does have a built-in voltmeter, but it has a temperature sensor, it has a dedicated protect light, and a clip monitor at the bottom to let you know whether you're clipping your amp or not. And I don't know if you guys actually dealt with amps and bass knobs often, but this is not the size bass knob wire that you usually get. You usually get something that's really, really thin, thinner than your telephone cord from back in the day. This thing right here is thick. This is like a Cat 6 cable or something like that. But either way, very high quality cable for your bass knob because it does so much. And this is probably one of the best bass knobs I've actually seen that came stock with the amplifier. Well guys, that's about it for this video. If you guys found any value, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, share, comment if you want to. The product links will be in the description. And I wanna take this time to give a shout out to all of my Patreons because you guys go the extra mile in supporting me and the channel. So I make sure I go the extra mile in supporting you by giving you a lot of behind the scenes footage. I also uh, give you wire diagrams to the vehicle that you or you and your friend are actually working on. And that's the platform that I'm using to get all my one-on-one -on -one coaches and teachings so if you need help we can actually get some dedicated one-on-one -on -one time so i can help you with your install and i won't have to worry about if i missed your comment because i'm getting like 50 comments a day and it's kind of hard to keep track now if you don't want to be held down to anything too long term there is a heart at the bottom of the video that says thanks I'm not asking anybody to do anything that you don't want to do but anything that you do is greatly appreciated until next time this is your boy jp signing out y'all have a blessed day